So good morning, uh, everyone. We have an exciting panel. Maybe this works. Oh, OK. Um, where the main topics that we want to address is there's pushes for, for digitization everywhere, um, automation, uh, new technologies like AI, machine learning, etc. And the real question is, are these being leveraged and pushed for by marketing or, or not? And if not, why not? And, and what's, what's the relevance uh, to marketing? So uh, I'll start out with just doing a quick overview here. I'm not sure the timer is going, so that means I have infinite time, I hope. <laughs> uh, and then I'll, uh, after I do a quick framing of the issues, hopefully, uh, we will introduce our, our speakers. Uh, Sayed Hussein, uh, who uh, is the general manager of data and analytics for MTN Group. MTN is Africa's largest telco, 220 million uh, customers were, uh, in 22 countries. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez would be next, uh, who heads up the big data and advanced analytics for Vodafone Italy and works with Vodafone Group. Uh, then uh, Paco Sanchez, who is uh, CEO of a very interesting company called uh, Pepper Money uh, in Spain. And Pepper Money is, is a, a group actually in many countries. Uh, he'll, he'll talk to you about some of the interesting challenges they've been uh, running in, in, in Spain. And then finally, Max. Uh, Deitmar, who will talk about uh, applications in the, in the energy sector and the issues they face there. So the themes I've asked the speakers to think about are uh, transforming marketing via, via digitization. Who drives the digitization? Why is it typically not being driven by the CMO or marketing? Why is marketing reacting? Uh, AI machine learning and their potential role in, in marketing and how much of it is being leveraged. And what are the barriers to innovation, to specifically technology innovation and leveraging the digitization in, in marketing? How can we take marketing to the next level? Uh, I'll start out, actually Syed will drill down further on a, on a diagram like this, but just to give you an idea, um, I, was, I have worked as a chief data officer in a couple of places, Yahoo. Uh, actually, I was the first chief data officer anywhere. We invented the title at the time as a joke. Uh, I did a bunch of startups. I worked at uh, Microsoft and other places. And most recently, I was the global chief data officer for Barclays Bank in London. Um, and then went back to doing open insights. But basically, the first time I came across this data fusion uh, problem where it was the cybersecurity department that said, I want data of everything put in one place. And uh, that included transaction data, that included demographics, that included credit card, that included social media, logs of applications, etc. And what happened when we put it all together in one place and we had to use the big data platform is suddenly demand came from everywhere in the bank, from fraud, uh, AML and KYC, anti-money laundering, marketing, of course, uh, operations, risk, etc. And we used um, a lot of open source technology to make this practical and make it happen quickly. And we used Hadoop, which is the, the big data platform out there. So this pattern, you see it instantiated, say, at the MTN. We had a project with them as Open Insights that Sayed will talk about. So in a bank, why did we care about all this? From a marketing perspective, banks were very manual. They knew. They knew everybody, right, because they were very local. When they went to scale, digital banking, they lost that information. And very simple things like KYC, know your customer, became very, very expensive processes. Risk assessment went from being based on knowledge, you know, the bank manager knows that you have a farm or you're in good business or in bad business, etc. It suddenly became a deep question, you know, how, how risky is this and how do I do it at scale? So that technology is, is very, very important to banking, and it's the key to restoring that intimacy that used to be there 100 years ago, 50 years ago, and now is, is sort of lost, where banks know very little, really, about their customers, even though by law they're required to have all this information. Now, in e-commerce, we all know that this is a big deal. It's been happening for a while. Many, many companies, Amazon, others, are driving tons of business through, through the use of data, 
to make sure that both the marketing and the cross-selling and all of that works well. But you can see it elsewhere. Netflix, for example, uh, actually attributes about a billion dollars in savings a year to their ability to use the data to very quickly help you decide which movie do you want to stream. Uh, so it was a surprising number to me when, 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 I, when I learned at the scale of that. Uh, Disney uh, implemented uh, a whole program. It was a big $1 billion investment in wearables. Uh, in fact, now they are the fourth largest distributor of wearables in the world, but they used it to sort of substitute tickets to help you track rides and get on lines and so forth. The benefits to the business were huge. Uh, turnstile uh, transaction time was down 30%. Labor uh, down 20% in their parks, et cetera, because they, they instituted this technology. So the question now is, how do you leverage this technology, which are examples of digitization, but use it in, in marketing, and how do you make it work for the business? Now, the world of data is, is pretty messy. Uh, business wants data to be reliable, affordable, timely, accurate, comprehensive, unified, accessible, easy to understand, and easy to embed in business. And if you typically go to any business, all the answers to this is no, 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 no. It's expensive, it's slow, uh, it's not reliable, uh, all sorts of problems. And there was a whole new wave with big data and technology to sort of move it uh, to a new world where you can leverage all sorts of data with a high variety, et cetera, uh, and make it a reality. Now, that does offer solutions. It is affordable, but it comes with a lot of problems. So two slides here, and then I'm going to hand it over to our speakers. One is around how any data set can become a big data set. So here's a data set from a bank, right? Customer ID, age, gender, address, job, and a few behavioral things. What did you buy? Or what, what, what products do you subscribe? Now, this is a traditional structured data set. You can go to LinkedIn and get a whole professional graph. You can go to Google and other search engine and get all sorts of unstructured information. You can go to Facebook and get a social graph. Uh, about social interactions, likes of not just the person, but their friends, etc. And you see the news and you see uh, Mark Zuckerberg at the, at the Congress testifying about how some companies use this data. Uh, YouTube and Flickr will bring you videos, uh, images, etc. And of course, there's articles, publications about the person, their job, their work, etc. So all of this can come together. And in e-commerce, this has gotten worse because a transaction went from being what, when, where, how much, and what payment method to being something much richer. It has context. Where are you? What's around you? Are you moving fast? Temperature, ambient sound? What is exhaust around you? Uh, data exhaust. And then a graph. Where are you going to? From? What's on your calendar next? Etc. So all of these suddenly, in a simple transaction, became a very, very rich object uh, that is hard to deal with. And many companies deal with it by creating these data lakes. And the problem with these data lakes is, are they sustainable? Can you keep them going? And the answer is no. Finding data in a data lake is basically like shopping in a flea market. You find something, you're not sure where it came from. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it stolen? Is it trustworthy, etc.? cetera? And you, you pretty much don't have a story for how do you take it next. So is this sustainable? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, an example of that for me, my favorite, is Amazon. Everybody here uses Amazon probably. Biggest data lake in the world. And you can quickly find an object, refine your search, click on it, and somehow you get the right details for the right object. So uh, what we will be coming back to talk about as we go through the presentations of our presenters is some of these issues. These are our approaches of how we deal with it. We believe, believe strongly in data as a service, meaning take away the fragmentation, make it systematic, make it uniform, much like Google Analytics or anything else, and then drive the priorities based on it, based on it and, and you know, take essentially centralize the data, which increases its value. And you have to worry about things like, do you have the data culture? And how do you drive it? You know, is there governance here? Is it self-serve? Can you help yourself to a lot of the data and get what you need? And are you leveraging open source to make it affordable and sustainable? Uh, with that, I'd like to invite our first speaker, Sayed Hussein from MTN Group, uh, to tell us about some of the experiences at MTN.